our midweek film premiere on Central at 8 o'clock. is about to be mine. Hi, French fry inspector. <laughs> French fry inspector, leave me alone. Whoa, it's almost midnight. Mom's gonna freak if I'm out past curfew again. Sure, leave just when I've lost the future Mr. Lindsay Selkirk. I can see it now. I'll become a lonely old hag with no hair, stained dentures, and 50 cats. <laughs> Oh, wait, Eve, you can't leave. I just got here. Besides, you've never looked prettier than you do tonight. Really? Yeah. I mean, this is the prettiest I've ever seen you look. As a matter of fact, I don't think you ever looked this pretty again. I'd say you peaked. Thanks, Chris. I think. No, but I've really got to go. Nobody move a muscle or a clam. As a matter of fact, don't move any seafood at all. Guys, I'm going to hurry. What do you want? Pictures. I'm Marlowe's newest paparazzi. There's a picture of my mama razzi, my brother razzi, oh, baby razzi. Who's that? Lyle Wagner. Came with the wallet. I've got no time for this. Oh, just give me a second, and you'll be out of here in an hour. I just want to take some pictures for my scrapbook. Okay, everybody, hold up your scraps. Ooh, you got some good scraps. That's it, I'm out of here. And this time, nothing's gonna stop me. On the other hand, what's a few extra minutes? <laughs> Fighting broke out overnight between rival factions on the Israeli-Syrian border. DVFL Garland, do you know what time it is? It's... Midnight! What? Yeah, you know, spring ahead, fall back. Good night, Mom. Stop. Evie. You look me straight in the eye and you tell me you didn't freeze time and set that clock back. I didn't freeze time and set the clock back. You're looking me in the forehead. <laughs> Mom, everyone looks you in the forehead. <laughs> okay, I did it. But I can explain everything. Really? You can explain why you misused your powers to lie to me? And why this is the third weekend night in a row that you came home late and you didn't even bother to call me? Okay, maybe I can't explain everything. Evie, I was so worried. Mom, if I'm not home on time, you should just trust that I'm okay. I'm not a little kid. I'm 17 years old. Yes, honey, you're right. You're not a little kid. You ground a little kid for a week. But because you're 17 years old, I'm grounding you for two weeks. <laughs> two weeks? Two weeks in one day. I hope you're beginning to see a pattern here. This is so stupid. And just because I was late for a dumb 12 o'clock curfew, and didn't call my mommy. Oh. I remember when mommy used to sound so cute. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mick, you're wrong. Now, this is something that's known all over the world. 
Come on, Kyle. Historians have been disagreeing about this fact for years. Donna, will you settle an argument for us? Did the Partridge family really play their own instruments? Wow. <laughs> hey, Donna. What's wrong? Well, last night I grounded Evie for coming home late without calling me, and she's really upset. Now I'm wondering if I'm being too hard on her. I don't think so. You know, when I was a cowboy star, I rode a horse named Tony, who kept trying to throw me. Finally, I said, Tony, if you throw me one more time, we're never making another movie together. Really? What happened? He threw me, and I fired him. I think I understand what Kyle means. If you stick to your guns, it'll pay off. Right, Kyle? It paid off for Tony. You went on to become Mr. Ed. You know, I called him to congratulate him, and he never called me back. And I know he can dial. He used Wilbur's phone all the time. Thank you, Kyle. I just wish there was a way that I, I could make Evie see that not calling is so wrong. Yeah, that's a tough one. I got an idea. I'm sure you do, Kyle. If I thought you and I'd go out tonight, you'd come home late, and then Evie would see what it's like for someone to be late and not call. Kyle, that is the worst I... Kyle, that's the cleverest thing you've ever come up with. <laughs> That'll give me a chance to show you my new swing and singles apartment. Swing and singles, huh? How many women you brought up there? Well, let's see. Uh, counting Donna, that adds up to uh, 19. Carry the three. One. <laughs> ah, so how's our little prisoner? About to break out. Oh, maybe you didn't eat so much chocolate. Oh, well, you're here. So where are you guys going tonight? Huh? Oh, well, we're, uh, Donna, tell her where we're going tonight. Well, we're going to a city council banquet. Yes, they're, uh, they're honoring uh, Kyle with a special commendation for bravery. Oh, really? Really? Yes, really. Uh, come on, we better get going. Well, bravery is just part of being a police chief. Yeah. I mean, you never know what might be lurking around the next corner. You always have to be ready to expect the unexpected. Ah! Ah! Oh, that's all right, I'm here. Evie, I'll be back by 9 o'clock. Now, remember, no Arsenio, and your friends can only stay for 20 minutes. OK, OK. Don't worry, Mrs. G. We won't stay in this house a minute longer than we're supposed to. Lindsay, this idea of yours is brilliant. Yeah, well, when you're grounded as often as I am, you learn to spot the loopholes. <laughs> I can't wait to see your mom's face when she gets home, sees us, and can't do anything about it. <laughs> Yeah, well, you better clean up. Get up the work and get back. I'm really sorry about this. No. Don't worry about it, Evie. We'll find something to do. Hey, we'll go see the new Kevin Costner movie. If it's all right with you. No, 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 it's okay. Yeah, go have fun. Go see my favorite movie star without me. While I'm here all alone. Okay. I can't stand to see you this way. Really? Then you'll stay here with me? No, I said I can't stand to see you this way. <laughs> You're really bumming me out. I probably won't even enjoy the movie now. Three cross, nine letters, character on 30-something that whines a lot. All of them. Hi, Evie. Your mom home yet? No. Well, I thought I'd come over and cheer you up with a little song. <laughs> Evie Garland woke up one morning, got out of bed, couldn't go no place. She was grounded, <laughs> trapped in a cage, no way out. I feel so much better now. Oh, tough crowd. You know, it's after nine. Mom said she'd be home by now. Hmm. Why hasn't she called? She's never been this late before. Maybe she was in a terrible auto accident. 
Doesn't that worry you? Yeah, it does. I need to use the car tomorrow. <laughs> Look, I know what's going on. Mom is purposely staying out late so I'll know how she feels when I don't come home on time, right? Ah, I guess I blew it. Maybe I should forget about acting, stick to music. Definitely. Grounded. Life sentence. Dying old maid. I still don't see why I went to the goody-goody and not the banquet. Kyle, for the last time, there was no banquet. I made it up. It was fake, not real. Like your nose. Understand? Yeah, I understand, all right. You're just jealous. You didn't want to see me win the award. And this is my real nose. Kyle, you wanted to show me your apartment. Let me just take a quick peek, and then I have to leave. Out of the words, huh? I have the words, Kyle. I'm just too polite to use them. <laughs> Didn't you borrow this from me for a few days back in 1982? Hasn't been that long. Hey. You borrowed this clock from me years ago. And that's my new vase. <laughs> Come on, Donna. That vase is an antique. Sure, now. <laughs> Kyle, tomorrow I'll be back with the U-Haul to pick up my things. But now I have to get home to Evie before she worries too much. The door is locked. I know. I designed it myself. You see, the door locks automatically when you close it behind you. And you can only open it with a special security card. Well, do you have that special security card? <laughs> of course. <laughs> What moron would walk into his own apartment, close the door behind him without bringing his special security card? Uh-oh. Uh-oh? What do you mean, uh-oh? Well, I, I must have left my card in the lock outside. I'll call my manager. Uh-oh. Again with the uh-oh? Well, my phone isn't connected yet. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Stay tuned next for the Arsenio Hall Show. All right. Uncle Mick! Don't Uncle Mick me. Your mother said no Arsenio. Arsenio? It's 11 o'clock. Your mother said she'd be home by 10. Something's wrong. I'll go over to Kyle's to check things out. Up. Look, I already figured it out, remember? I'm not worried. The plan was all Kyle's idea. Now I'm worried. I'll go to Kyle's. You stay here in case they show up. <sighs> oh, Kyle, you've got to get me out of here. This is all your fault. My little baby must be worried sick by now. Oh, come on, Donna, relax, will you? Calm down. I got something that'll calm you down. Oh, now. Oh, boy. Oh, now. Whoa, whoa. Time on. Kyle, aren't you a little old for this? Property of Sherman Food Mart? I thought I'd free Mr. Trotz and let him run wild. <laughs> well, climb on. Kyle, I'm all grown up now. I'm a mature woman. I'm not going to ride a mechanical horse. Well, suit yourself. I guess we'll just have to watch one of my old movies. <laughs> Get him! Come on, boy! Get him! Donna, ride him with a light rain. You're choking him. I know, Kyle. I'm pretending that he's you. This is all because of your stupid plan. You're acting childish. I am not acting childish! <laughs> Don't say it. Who is it? It's Mick. 
Are you all right? Mick! Mick! Oh, Mick! We're locked in! Mick! Just put the car to the door, Mick, and it'll open. Oh! Oh, Mick! Oh, great. Evie's home, worried sick, and you're in here riding on... Mr. Trotz! <laughs> that card you used to open the door? Did you bring that in with you? Was I supposed to? Wrong answer! Now, what do we do? Right for help? Donna, Ethel, Garland. It's just us. We wanted to tell you that the movie was nothing special. Mm. Except for the fight scene. <clears throat> and the chase scene. And the love scene. You'll never believe where Kevin Costner has a tattoo. Look, I don't care about the love scene. My mom's late. My Uncle Mick went to Kyle's and now he's late. Where does he have a tattoo? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about your mom. I'll go find her. You guys stay here while I check Kyle's place. But Chris... No, don't try to stop me. I know what I'm doing. Where's Kyle's new apartment? I don't know. So where are you going? I don't know. I know where he lives. Maybe you should take me with you. Look, Lindsay, okay, I I'm not an idiot, okay? Just tell me where it is, and I'll find it myself. OK. You go out Evie's driveway and take a left. Then go to the second stop sign and make a right. Then you go 300 yards, and after the third traffic light, it's on the northwest corner. Do you know what you're doing now? Yep. Taking you with me. <laughs> Kyle, look at all this stuff of mine you've never returned. And I've only known you a few months. I've known him 11 years. Hey, just a minute now. I mean, some of this stuff is mine. Like these posters. Well, they're not mine technically. But the studio didn't ask for them back. <laughs> Who is, Who is it? it? Lindsay and Chris. Lindsay, honey, sweetie, do Mrs. G a favor and push in that nice card and open the door. Let me do it. Chris, she asked me to back off. Lindsay, I have just as Chris, much as darling, I... back off! <laughs> I'm going home. Uh, just a minute, Donna. Kyle, I have been trapped in this apartment with you for three very long hours. There's nothing you can say that will make me stay any longer. I just wanted to give you a, your purse. Oh, OK, sorry. Toss it over here. <laughs> Would everyone except Kyle turn away? I don't want any witnesses. It's after midnight and they're not back yet. They could have been in an accident or in the hospital. No, honey, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're OK. How do you know? Well, I don't. It, it just sounded like the dad thing to say, you know, like, it's cold out, take a sweater. Dad, come on, I need your help. OK, kiddo. I'll, I'll give you the power to see where they are. Now, picture them in your mind. Think. Think. Hey, look. They're OK. Except Mom's got her hands around Chief Applegate's throat. You better get over there fast. OK. And take a sweater. Believe me. Believe me, I just want to talk to him calmly until he's unconscious. Hot. There is 10 bucks in this for each of you if you move aside. Sorry, oh, Chief. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, Who is it? Evie! Evie! Evie, honey! We're locked in! Listen to me. See that card? Put the card in the lock and open the door. And this is very, very important. Take the card in with you. Oh! Oh, good. Is everybody okay? Well. My neck's a little sore. Thanks to your crazed mother. Come on, guys. Let me put some of this stuff in my pickup. Pickup? Mick, do you have a pickup? Uh, Could I borrow it sometime? <laughs> Honey, I am so, so sorry that I worried you. Worried? I wasn't worried. Evie, you weren't? OK, I admit it. I was really worried about you. You know, until tonight, I never understood why you got so mad when I was late and didn't call. It's pretty scary, huh? Yeah. 
I never know if you're in trouble or you're hurt or worse. I'm really sorry, Mom. I know you are, sweetheart. And I also know that uh, maybe 12 o'clock is a little early for a weekend curfew, so... From now on, you can stay out until 12.30. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Oh, it's okay. After all, what's another half hour of insomnia, tension, and anxiety? <laughs> Let's go home. Oh, Chief Applegate, here's your card. Thanks. Oh, Kyle, can I borrow that? 